Hey guys, this is Vernier for CardMatters.com, bringing you a series for January of 2014 called Building Good Poker Study Habits, 10 Steps to More Mindful Poker. So the idea is that in January or whatever month you decide to start, you're going to go through 10 exercises, which are going to be geared towards developing better study habits and just better poker play in general. So there's 10 steps that I picked out. A lot of them involved hold a manager. Some of, some of them involved some selected readings. So the first step is to analyze five or more big winning hands. Now, for each video, I'm going to go over one of these. And uh, today I'm going to, after I kind of lay some foundation out, I'm going to talk about step one. Step two is to analyze five or more big losing hands. Uh, so you kind of have complementary hands there. Step three is to analyze five or more hands where you call the three bet in position to kind of look at how you're playing when you face a three bet and you just end up calling. And step four is to analyze five or more hands where you three bet the button opener uh, from the blinds. So you're going to be out of position. So again, three and four are kind of complementary. And step five is to read Skilleroy's 3K milestone post. And I'll post a link to that on becoming a stronger poker player. Uh, Skip Roy is a very experienced poker player, and uh, anytime somebody sets out to write a long post and what they think, where they think their success comes from, I think it's worth reading. So number six, analyze five or more hands where you played sevens through jacks without initiative. I think that's an area where a lot of people struggle. Step seven, analyze five or more hands where you three bet ace king out of position. Again, an area where a lot of people uh, struggle. Step eight is to read the basics in Matthew Janus' application of No Limit Hold'em. I think most people would benefit from having a uh, general understanding of game theory and the basics are available on amazon.com uh, the kindle preview so you can go on there and you can check it out and if, you know if if it intrigues you go ahead and buy the full book but you can just get a preview of it for free on amazon step number nine analyze five or more hands where you play the turn and river heads up out of position in a single race pot with initiative that's another area where a lot of people struggle with it's kind of a mouthful to say, but the general idea is playing turns and rivers out of position is difficult for people. In single race pot, because the stack to pot ratio is still kind of low, but it's 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 very much in that gray area. And step 10 is to analyze five or more hands where you play the turn and river heads up in position in a single race pot without initiative. It's kind of the flip side of that, uh, it's the flip side of number nine. Uh, this time you called preflop, it's still heads up, and you are in position. So I try to make, uh, except for six and seven, I try to make the pairs complementary for you to think about specific hands uh, from, from a couple different perspectives. So what I think would be good for this is there's a website called lift.do, and I'm not sure what do stands for, but basically it's a habit forming website, which allows you to pick things that you're interested in doing. So for example, if you, uh, here is the general outline. I have no goals in, in, in this specific one. So you can add a goal and like a lot of people, let's say your goal is to drink more water. So you hit join. And then your, this is kind of what your dashboard looks like. And when you end up, like at the end of the day, if you think you drank more water, however you quantify it, you just check in. And then at the end of the week, it shows you, you know, how many times you've checked in for the week. So I set up uh, this specific plan for... Uh, on lift. So when you go to your dashboard, if you go to the bottom here, just type in mindful poker and you've got 10 steps to more mindful poker in 2014. You can hit join and here are all the steps and it kind of set up a, a, a website for it. And let's say you complete the first step. You just hit OK. And the next day, you can skip that step and you can go on to the next one. So th this just gives you some accountability for how you're doing. And I think accountability and uh, 
accountability and any kind of support is pretty important too. So yeah, basically that's, that's the general idea. It's, I wanted to have something in place that would allow you to have that accountability. All right. So let's look at the first step, which is to examine five or more big winning hands where you won or lost 75 big blinds. And I'll kind of go over the way that I'm going to be studying these. First step to doing this for today would be starting a spreadsheet and you can either do it on Excel or in my case, I can do it in Google Docs. So just sign into your Google account, start a new spreadsheet and I call the practice one, big pots one. And I've got six columns here, the date, my hand, villain type, villain hand, category and notes. So let's go ahead and kick it off. We're going to go to hold a manager and in hold a manager, we're going to go to more filters and under the filters, I'm going to go to other advanced filters and and other advanced filters. We're going to go to other and under other, we're going to pick player one big blinds and the player one big blinds we're going to be greater, we're going to say greater than 74.99. So basically bigger than 75 big blinds or 75 big blinds or bigger. We're going to hit add. Looks like it go ahead. It said 75 big blinds. So maybe, maybe that'll do the trick. We'll hit okay. Now I want to sort it by time. So the earliest will be, so basically I don't want to sort it by the, uh, I don't want to sort it by from, from biggest to smallest. I want to sort it uh, just in order of time. So here's the first one. We're going to examine them one at a time. So let's take a look at this pot, how it develops. There is a raise under the gun, an overcall. I'm sitting on a hundred big blinds and I end up overcalling with seven, eight suited kind of loose, but it builds a multi-way pot and perfect. I flop the nuts. Someone leads this guy. He's playing 2213. So he ends up leading like $2 and 18 and I end up raising on the flop pretty substantially. It's a fairly wet flop. So I definitely want to pump, pump the money in here. And then he ends up just pretty much going all in and I end up calling. So he ends up having middle set. So I would say that's pretty much a cooler, but I definitely like my very big flop size raise. So I didn't quite make it pot, but uh, I almost made it. I almost made it pot. So for my analysis, I would say date. Uh, I think this was on the 28th. So from the beginning of the year, my hand seven, eight suited villain hand nine, nine villain type. Let's go to the beginning preflop. So short stacked kind of rec player, I would say. So uh, actually more like medium stacked uh, 22, 13. So kind of on the tight passive side category, uh, maybe cooler seven, eight suited versus nine, nine on uh, uh, six, nine, ten, heart, heart, flop, notes. I like my big flop sized raise. Pre flop is okay in position. So I, those are the main things that I want to take away from this hand. Is that on like yeah, on the flop I like it. Uh, obviously on the flop I I definitely like my raise size. Preflop is uh, a little bit on the looser side, but I think it's okay in position, especially if I have this, you know, 30, 18 player in the blinds here and this kind of this other short stacker. So uh, that's another uh, thing that I'll say. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and add to it that uh, preflop is okay in position. I'll say with marks in the blinds. All right, good. So that's the first hand. Uh, let's take a look at the next hand, pocket aces. I raise preflop, 
get squeezed. And I actually don't remember many of these, but I I think I like a small four bet here, uh, given how deep we are in position. We're, we're not horribly deep, but I don't mind a small four bet. I don't mind calling either, hoping that total star shoves. So I end up making a small four bet, and the villain ends up calling in position, and the flop is Jin. I bet small, and he just ends up shoving, and I end up calling. So my notes here would be, I think it's from the same day, 1-28-2013, my hand ace-ace, villain hand 10-10, villain type 25-15, let's see if I know anything else, 3-bet, 3.6, so 25-18 type player, uh, full stacked 25-18, nope. It was looser than that. 25-15. Category. Villain overplayed. 10-10. Notes. Pre free flop given. Full stacks. I like the 4-bet. And maybe I'll say and small bet on flop to induce action. All right, so I definitely think the villain overplayed the hand here, but that's okay. Let's go on to the next one, pocket queens. I end up calling preflop versus a 22-20 player. Let's see if there's anybody crazy in the blinds. Well, so there's this player on uh, on the button that I, uh, with this player on the button playing 4219 with a very high 3-bet, 11.5. I like calling here, hoping he squeezes. And he does put in a small bet. And now I hope that I come over the top and make it something like 16 or whatever. <laughs> I just ended up shoving. So he ends up calling... Eh, I think without history, I don't like the shove. I would prefer just four betting, but I think with history, this is okay. Saying so, we know we know that the original guy who ends up calling the the four bet or the the three bet squeeze, he he can't be strong if he's just calling there and he's not isolating. So I end up going up against Jax and I end up holding. All right, so my notes here is that the same day. 128, 2013, queen, queen, villain hand is jack, jack, and the villain is 42, 19, so full stacked, 42, 19, aggro monkey, uh, villain squeezed small with, so I'll just say villain overplay. Villain overplay Jack Jack. Uh, notes. Uh, I like calling pre flop and hoping villain squeezes as he has been doing. And once he does, and uh, Initial razor and first razor calls. First razor isn't strong. I like a standard um, four bet, but shove is okay. I actually think a shove is weaker, so maybe I'll say um, I like the shove since. It represents weakness, like a 5-5 five, five through 9-9, nine, nine, or ace-king, ace-queen. So I think a shove there is actually better for me. All right, so, so far, I have three hands. I've got a cooler on the flop where someone overplayed a... Um, well, no, I think they played play that hand fine. And then twice I've had a villain overplay 
a uh, medium pocket pair preflop. So let's actually do one more since we have time. So pocket queens, looks like I have a raise on the button from a tight player and then I end up three betting and he ends up four betting and I think I just end up shoving and he ends up calling and I end up winning a flip. So this one should be pretty easy to analyze. Same day, 1, 28, 2013, queen, queen, uh, villain had ace king, villain is 17, 13, tag, uh, standard flip, villain, four bet, ace king, small blind versus my big blind, three bet. There you go. So, very straightforward. All right, so I would just keep doing this and going through my hands and looking for any kind of a pattern. And so far, really no pattern emerges other than in two of the hands, the villain has overplayed pocket tens. So as you can see, it's fairly simple analysis. I would recommend doing, uh, doing at least five of them. If you are doing them and things are going well, go ahead and do 10. And that's a good, uh, good first step in building a poker habit. So that is the first episode of building good poker study habits. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And as always, good luck at the tables.